Hello, true duelists. YGO Strats here with Yu-Gi-Oh! Single Card History, where I talk about some of the cards that have impacted Yu-Gi-Oh! throughout the years, and some of the other ones that just didn't. Today's card, one of the oldest and greatest floodgates in the entire game, Imperial Order. Order was first released in Pharaoh's Servant as a secret rare in 2002, with notable reprints including Dark Beginning 1 as an ultra rare in 2004, Duelist Saga as an ultra rare again in 2017, and Structure Deck Rocket Revolt Volt as a common in 2019. One of the oldest cards in the game, this one is very familiar with the ban list. It essentially came to the TCG Limited, being released in October and limited on the December 2002 ban list, before being one of the first 13 cards to ever be banned in the entire game on the August 2004 ban list. It stayed banned for over a decade before being limited again on the March 2017 ban list after it received an errata. From there, it would stay at 1 until the February 22 ban list banned it again, where as of this video, it has stayed since, and I pray it always will. A continuous trap card with an errata, its original effect reads, negate all spell effects on the field. During each of your standby phases, pay 700 life points or destroy this card. After its errata, it was changed to read, negate all spell effects on the field. Once per turn, during the standby phase, you must pay 700 life points. This is not optional, or this card is destroyed. I'll get to the impact, or lack thereof, of the errata later, but I'll start with its effect, because it is the definition of simple but powerful. Negating all effects of spell cards on the field is a stupidly good effect. Yu-Gi-Oh! is comprised of three separate core card types, the monsters, the spells, and the traps. And if you can shut off the effects of, broadly speaking, an entire third of them, you're looking at a very strong card. The beauty of Imperial Order on release is ultimately being a trap card, and therefore being Speed Spell 2, or simply put, chainable to the opponent's cards. A reason cards like Imperial Order, or in my opinion something like Vanity's Emptiness, any Floodgate, are so strong or abusable is because even though on paper they stop both players with their effects, in practice, it only affects the opponent, because sure, once Imperial Order is up, no one gets to play their spell cards, but you have to set IO before you can use it. So on your turn, you could use every spell card you see and want. Then you set your Imperial Order, and then when the opponent tries to use a spell card and play the game, hey look, you've chained Imperial Order and now your full board is backed up with no fear of any spell card from the opponent. And man, do decks love their spells. Countless archetypes have a Rota or Equivalent, Power spells to break boards like Regeki or Lightning Storm are very popular, and starters like Emergency Teleport or a Hero Lives. Any field spell the deck wants to run, and most hilariously, back row destruction like Feather Duster used to try and get rid of the set cards that IO just negates. And with the original print, it got even worse for the player dealing with it, because in its original print, Imperial Order had an optional maintenance cost. So if you decided to keep on negating spells to keep preventing the opponent from playing Yu-Gi-Oh, you just paid 700 life points and keep on going. But if you draw your good spell and you want to use it yourself, you can decide to just let it die, send it to the graveyard, and that way the opponent got screwed over, but now you can do as you please. This kept control of the game heavily in favor of the player with the Imperial Order, preventing the opponent from playing their spells for as long as they'd like, and shutting it off to use their spells when they felt like going for game. Its initial ban was probably one of the most welcome things in the game. I didn't play myself, but I can't I can't imagine it was poorly received. And though I started playing the game while it was banned, I can assure you, uh, no one was clamoring for it to come back. I, I really did not see or hear a single person being like, man, if only we had Imperial Order at any point from 09 to 17. The errata it received in 2017 was one of many that got errata. And while there's some disagreement on whether an errata is a healthy way to bring back older cards, or that it instead ruins the legacy of a card, Imperial Order's errata really didn't do much to change the card, all things considered. Unlike Crush Card 
Virus, a card whose errata drastically altered how the card worked and was played, Imperial Order's function stayed the same. It still negated spell effects on the field. They just made it unoptional in terms of its upkeep and increased the frequency of its payments. Where its original print was only during your standby phase, its errata now paid during each player's standby phase and was not optional. This means that if you find yourself with only 700 life points during your standby phase and you've got Imperial Order face up, your Imperial Order kills you. As long as you have 700 or more to pay, you're paying the cost. If you're curious as to what would happen if you had less than 700 life points, that says it's right on the card. It goes right to the graveyard, you don't pay the cost, and now, now you can actually play your spell cards. <laughs> so functionally, the card will kill you twice as fast, and it's not optional. That's the big change. But by the time it came back to the game in 2017, games had already sped up drastically, and that option rarely mattered. Sure, sometimes you screwed yourself over with it, but when it went wrong, it made for a bit of a grind game, whereas when it went right, you just won outright more often than not. As negate boards grew in frequency and strength, Konami tried to mitigate them with some more equalizers for going second. Cards like Dark Ruler No More or Forbidden Droplet, notably both spell cards, and able to be responded to with Imperial Order, or at least, you know, most of the time you can respond if they're using Droplet. Meaning, big unbreakable boards became even more unbreakable. Things came to a peak in late 2021 and early 2022. Prior to then, IO flip-flopped between being a main deck or a side deck card once the errata hit the field, between format and deck needs. For example, Paleo Frog in 2017 mained it as solid generic disruption and as kind of an insurance against any potential main deck hate they might see. But if you look at Zodiac lists from the time, more often than not, it was played in the side. When Striker was the deck to beat, plenty of decks would main it as a means to shut off Striker decks in the best of cases, or at least kinda hinder their grind game at worst. But when Striker fell off in 2020 and decks like Eldlich or Emancipator came to strength, again, now you're looking at it being a dependent on the deck. But by 2022, the best decks all just started maining it. Like mentioned with Dark Ruler No More and Forbidden Droplet being the biggest threats to boards, Io was just a very easy answer alongside full strength sword soul combo. And we reached a point where Io was in something like 40% of topping decks or something absurd. Players were more than happy to see the card go as a sacky one of to win games is almost never enjoyable, especially when it's just no written in more words than necessary. And it doesn't help that if you play against a back row deck, the majority of removal for back row is spell cards. Mystical Space Typhoon, Twin Twister, Feather Duster, Heavy Storm, Lightning Storm, Cosmic Cyclone, all great cards and all with lovely green backing. It's also just really funny to look at Imperial Order's errata compared to like every other errata, apparently. Like I said, Crush Card Virus went from one of the greatest and like strongest trap cards in the game to being one of the worst and least playable traps in the game. Brain Control went from a great tech card to being unplayable. Ring of Destruction got neutered beyond recognition, and Imperial Order cost a bit more. As if the bad part, the thing, the reason we need that card banned was because we weren't paying the maintenance enough. Didn't have anything to do with shutting down a third of all cards in the game. And of course, because, I don't know, God hates us, it's also just a card that refuses to leave apparently, since we got rid of it in the TCG, but it is still at one in Master Duel, in a format that I find to be, uh, unique. But old man, this guy sure refuses to die. Overall, Imperial Order is a timeless floodgate, able to shut off not just a third of all cards in the game, but at least a third of all opponents' chances at victories every time it's flipped face up. It is a card that was as good in 2002 as it was in 2022, 20 years later, a feat very few cards can achieve. It was broken in 02, it was broken in 2022, and you can bet if it ever came back it would be just as broken in 2042 as well. It has more than earned its spot as one of the best cards in the game to play and one of the worst ones to face. And so that's our look at Yu-Gi-Oh! single card history, Imperial Order. Stay tuned for our next video and feel free to suggest some cards to review or what type of video you'd like to see. Don't forget to like and as always, subscribe to YGO Strats so you too can become a true duelist.